When you come sail the tropical waters around Trinidad, you might encounter a very unusual sight, a ship that appears out of time and out of place. It's around a thousand years too late, and at least 2,000 miles off its course. A Viking ship, they've never been seen so far south. But this very ship comes from even further south because it was born in Brazil. This is the story of the Dracar. The best man to tell her story is Roberto. He knows the boat better than anyone else because he built her. Dracar, it means dragon. All the Viking ships is called Dracas. Uh, how, how can you start your dream? How can you start? That's my question. So I start reading books. And then I decided, when I have a chance, to build a, a Viking ship. I did it in three years, three years and a half. It was quite fast compared to the, the people that normally build a boat. But I have some, some people to help me. So I built the boat in Brazil and on Bahia and the little town that's called Camamu. My boat is 76 feet, almost 24 meters. I get the plans in on the Norwegian uh, Museum. It was a long time ago. Now you can find it on the internet. Unlike modern sailing boats that have a lot of labor-saving gadgets, the Drakkar requires a minimum of four people on board for sailing operation. The boat has neither an autopilot nor winches, so one person must permanently steer, and all sail maneuvers have to be performed with sheer manpower. With the heyday of the old Vikings past, these days it is difficult to find a crew for such a strenuous adventure. So able-bodied crew is always welcome. Roberto made a new, bigger sail, and he wants to try it out. The sail looks good in the harbor without wind, but how will it perform at sea? To find out, Roberto wants to take the Drakkar out for a sea trial. The next morning, the dragon is ready to leave its lair. Since navigation in narrow harbors is a very tricky business, it is good to have some extra hands and the assistance of a miniature tugboat. Roberto expertly steers the Drakkar out of the harbor to the open sea. Now the time has come for the dragon to spread its wings in the form of an 8 by 8 meter square sail. With combined efforts, the sail gets hoisted up the mast. One person has to pull the sail up, while two climb the mast to make sure that it doesn't get entangled along the way. Then the sheets need to be tightened. For a proper trial under sail, there's only one vital ingredient missing. The wind. Eventually, Njord, the Viking god of wind and sea, sends a slight breeze to fill the sail.
slowly the dragon picks up speed. 3.4 The breeze doesn't last long, so the crew has to drop the sail and stow it away. Unlike historical Viking ships that relied completely on wind and human power, the Drakkar can fall back onto two powerful engines. To show the weekend Vikings the proper backdrop for his ship, Roberto steers her into the fjord-like Scotland Bay. The intrepid Brazilian Viking brings the Drakkar right to the head of the bay. Here the crew gets a taste of Viking life. The captain orders the oars to be taken out, and the boat is propelled by human power. But it looks easier than it is so the captain grabs an oar himself. With four people at the oars, the 40-ton ship reaches about one knot. For higher speeds, the Drakkar needs some extra crew. Roberto is satisfied with the results of the sea trial and is one step closer to reaching his big goal. I'm happy now on this moment, but I need to work for to come my dream is to arrive in Scandinavian countries by North Sea. If I have a chance, I'll go there. 